All right, Mr. Gatekeeper here. I have a Skywalker 16X520 MOSFET box. I mean, this amplifier right here is a straight 16 MOSFET amplifier. It's got 16 IRF 520 MOSFETs in it. Okay, I will be completely honest. I have no idea what the max you can drive into this amp. I have no idea pretty much anything about those characteristics. I have not had time to play with uh, 520s yet like I've really, really wanted to. But I used to own an 8 transistor, and I do remember I would drive 100 watts into it, and uh, I never ran it that way in long periods of time, but I did do it as testing. So this has double the amount, 16, so what I'm going to start off doing is I'm going to drive 200 watts into it on the high tap of this 100 amp supply, and you're going to see it's going to drop down to 18 volts, okay? I'm just going to show you a couple of figures here. All right. This right here is a 2X1446 box that I currently have on eBay. Okay. I got it hooked up to this supply down here. It's on 16 volts uh, float. Let's turn this off. Okay. This is what the driver's doing. I'm trying to make sure those don't touch right there. I'm not going to get real close up to the bird meter. I'll show you it's doing exactly 200 watts. Come on now. Go. Oh, it's doing 200 watts PEP. Look at the voltage drop. You probably can't hardly see it. Oh, that's dropping to 14 dot. Oh, six volts. Okay. It's dropping the, so the driver's running on 14.6 volts, 200 watts PEP. Alrighty, we're gonna go ahead and flip on the 16 IRF 520. I don't have the fan hooked up to it. Alrighty, this is what it produces. Let me get kind of close to it here. I don't want those leads to touch. I'm on the thousand watt slug. Okay. No. Alright, right there about 600 watts. And it's dropping about, uh, it's dropping about 18 volts. Now you can't see it with a flash. Oh, let me go over here to RMS. Alright, this is on RMS. Okay. Flash turned off better about that. Oh, right, right there, about 300 watts RMS. That's pretty impressive, actually, from these 520s. Oh, right there, about 300 watts RMS. All right, like I said, the flash went off. You can see this drop now. Oh, about 18 volts, 18.3 volts. All righty. I am now going to unhook the driver. Now, I'm just showing you all these many different drives just so you can get an idea of what I'm seeing on this end out of this box. Real neat amp, man. Really neat amp. <laughs> I would not be getting rid of this box if I wasn't needing money pretty bad, but I'm not that worried about it because I, I own about 300 520s myself, and I'm planning on building me some 520 boxes, but I'm pretty impressed in that 300 bird, but like I said, that was on 18 volts. I, I cannot tell you that it's safe to run it to that. I don't know. Okay, now we're going to hook up the old epoxy one pill. Give me a minute. Okay, this right here. And I'm on the hot radio too. So we're driving 8 watts RMS into each of these drivers. Sorry about that. I had a phone call. Let me make sure I'm hooked up right over here. All right, I'm hooked up to the one pill driver. Okay, it is uh, doing right at 100 watts peak, I believe. Let me check. Turn that off. No. 
Yeah. PP. Oh, right there at 100 watts peak. Okay. Oh, oh, and about 40 RMS. Okay. All right. Now I've now turned the supply on the medium tap, so we're not on 100 amps no more. We're on about 70 amps or so. So it's going to drop down a little lower. So I'm just showing you different, you know, just different drives, voltages, whatever, so you can see what the box is doing. So, so far the best we've seen is right there at 600 watts and about 300 RMS, a little under 300 RMS, which is quite impressive for that. Usually the MOSFETs will show low RMS, high PEP. Okay. All right, let's flip the box on. We're on PEP. 1,000 watt slug. Oh, yeah. 400 watts. Let's take a look at the drop. Do 16.2 volts. Okay, so we're driving 100 watts into it. No, oh, 400 watts PP. Let's take a look at the RMS. No, oh, about 180 RMS. That's pretty impressive, man. And see, these MOSFETs, they're, they're, they're rated at 100 volts. That don't mean they're rated at 100 volts in the application we're using them for right this moment. All right, now we're just going to turn the driver off. And we're just going to hit it with the radio and show you what it's doing with 8 watts RMS of drive, about 30 PEP. This is RMS. Go. Go. 17.2 volts drop. Okay. PP. Go. Oh. Uh, about 250 watts PP. And uh, I don't, I wasn't able to hook both of these amps up on two. Uh, on, basically, I wasn't able to hook the big, big box up on a lower voltage supply and hook the driver up at the same time. So, uh, uh, of course, you're going to see a little less, of course, uh, running on 15, 14 volts. Um, but it, it seems that, see, that's what's so confusing about these since I don't know the exact characteristics, meaning what's the max to drive, what's the max to volts. As far as I know, Skywalker never gave any statistics. I mean, I asked him to send some when I bought that one brand new, the 8X. He called it a 600 watt amp. Okay, he he specifically himself told me, and on the website at the time, called the 8 IRF 520, 8X IRF 520, he called that a 600 watt amp. So if that's a 600 watt amp, which I never saw it, then this would be a 1200, right? <laughs> All right, I do have the fan hooked up i just don't have it screwed and what i went ahead and did since i didn't know i, I knew i was going to be playing around with some voltages is i went ahead and added a um 24 volt fan okay so you're able to turn the voltage up and play around with that if you want all right i did a good bit to the amp um i cleaned the living crap out of it i mean you can look at it and tell this thing is clean as a whistle I, I mean I sat here and worked on it about two hours just cleaning the dang thing there was flux all over the place like he was just splashing flux in this thing <laughs> but I went ahead and cleaned it really well okay I added all these filter caps you see right here they're just thousands just added right there on the hot bus another thing is I added these um, these ceramic caps I added one two three four five six uh, 104 ceramic caps those are these blue ones back here that you see um, basically the whole hot bus only had solder where the transformers were soldered down at and that's it I, I didn't agree with that I went ahead and got some good thick uh, silver base solder and went ahead and filled the whole hot bus up with solder as you see to give it more current stability okay another thing I went ahead and did which I wasn't even demonstrating just then, which I should have been. 
I went ahead and added a remote port. And the reason why I did is there was a hole back here for it, but they didn't add it. I saw. I'm I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. I know I got a. I know it seems like I got an attitude. Uh, <laughs> there's a reason for it when it comes to these Skywalkers. I'm sorry about that. I had another call. That was the first time I've been interrupted twice. But anyway, as I was saying, I went ahead and added a remote port. I got my little test remote here hooked up. Just to show you, it works just fine. Oh. go another thing i went ahead and did is i cleaned out all the burrs i mean these holes the port holes back here for the fan there were burrs all in them uh the, the box was bent down the top here was bent down this top was bent down this was bent inwards i bent all that back up i get the burrs from the inside of the box off i also uh cleaned the, uh, also another thing is I've noticed that another box or two, it's like when he gets these made, there's plastic on them that you have to peel off. Well, this still had all the plastic on it. So, but the thing about it is the plastic's so hard to get off, you got to use your fingernails to get it off and you scrape, scrape, scratch the box a bit. So, I don't know. And there's some of the plastic that's still on it. Uh, I guess that's just to protect it while it's being shipped or whatever. But uh, the only last thing I can think of that I did was there was a hole up here up front that was there that had burrs all in it. I went ahead and popped a, uh, <clears throat> a button in there to cover up that hole. And I went ahead and put a little hot glue right there too because it wasn't exactly, didn't, didn't seem like it, the, the, the metal's so thin on this particular case. There's nothing wrong with that, I'm just saying it. It didn't seem like it was taken too well. I went ahead and just did that just to give it some extra durability because I already saw you had hot glue on these LEDs. So <laughs> I didn't think it hurt to add a little more. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that's it, man. Uh, I've been wanting to build one of these myself, and I am going to be building one of these as soon as I possibly can. But I am going to go with an AB bias version um, and try that out and see how it works. But, I mean, they're cheap. Yes, you got to use a lot more parts. And, I, and I'm kind of curious if I could make this box right here with these inch and a half transformers. But instead of doing it like this, put eight on each transformer instead of four on each transformer and see what the outcome is. The outcome is the same. And that can be a little less. And heck, let's say you get 500 watts out of this box. Use uh, 32 of them. Get 1,000 watts. But, you know, it's got its pros and cons. You got a lot more parts. A lot, you know. But, you know, it's still neat stuff. Neat technology. Pretty cool, man. The The... The, now the audio, I will give it. The audio sounds good and loud from these from these five twenties. It almost sounds like a fourteen forty six box or something. But there you go, man. The fan uh, spin, uh, spins good. You can pretty much turn this thing up to twenty six volts and be fine with that fan. Like I said, I cannot guarantee you anything with the box as an output. Only thing I can guarantee is what I just showed with the drive and with the voltage that I was on. That's all I can guarantee, so I can't guarantee nothing else. Like I said, hell, you might be able to run this thing on 20 volts all day long and it'll be fine with a certain amount of drive, but I don't know. I'd have to test with them. I mean, at that point, you might be able to talk on this Maybe even get a thousand watts out of it. Like I said, I don't know. I have no idea. But 520s aren't that expensive. If you pop them, you just pop this uh, little copper thing you see right here. It's on top of them. Up, replace the ones you popped. And you don't even have to put that back down. It just does that to 
to make it easier soldering the legs to it, but it does make it a little neater that way. But anyway, I'll have to run some extensive tests when I finally start playing around with these so I'll know what their max is and all this and that. Well, uh, either or, it's a neat box. You don't, you don't see these every day out there. 16, 16 IRF 520s. Heck, usually you have a radio with just one in it. Here's your 16. Gatekeeper out here around the northeast end. We're good and gone. Bye-bye.